Hey, this is Tanner Sherlock. I'm the pastor at Shadow State Chi Alpha. And this is our podcast where our mission is to make disciples who then make disciples. Be sure and subscribe so you can get our content every time we post. And I pray that this message blesses you today. God bless. All right, so I wanted to get in and um, record a podcast uh, just for the sake of keeping it updated. Um, life's been crazy busy for me. Um, we're full blown in support raising season. Um, we, our budget, uh, we're, I'm a Chi Alpha director. And so I'm a missionary with some of the God U.S. missions. Um, and so during the summer is our time to itinerate, which is traveling around to churches, sharing about our ministry, as well as reaching out to individuals who, um, who believe in what we do. And so kind of like a Patreon, um, we have an account set up with AGUSM and people give to us monthly in order to allow us to be on the college campus. So like Patreon, instead of, you know, making YouTube videos or um, doing entertainment, we, people invest in us in order to reach the secular college for the gospel. Um, and so, uh, this summer is when we really reach out to people and trying to, um, get as many people on our list to help support what we do financially. Um, so, it's been kind of a chaotic, busy season for me. And so I haven't had quite the time to record the podcast like I would normally like to, but, um, I want to get on and and at least share something with you guys. And so I was trying to think of a topic that would both be easy for me to record as well as, um, not take a ton of prep time. And so kind of just going off the cuff on this. And so I apologize if it's really random, um, because that's the way my brain works sometimes, most times. Um, (laughs) but, uh, I just wanted to to talk a little bit about, you know, what would I share with myself when I first got into ministry or for when I first became a Christian, um, you know, as somebody who's been walking with Jesus for now, I guess it'd be 13 years and I've been a pastor for 10 of those years. Um, you know, I've, I've learned a lot and I've invested a lot of time and energy into getting closer to Jesus. And so, you know, I, I want to take a second, <clears throat> you might not be wanting to become a pastor. However, you, um, you probably are wanting to get closer to Jesus. And so I wanted to share a little bit of, of what, as a mentor, I would go back and tell myself, knowing my specific situation, um, when I first got involved in Christianity, when I first gave my life to Jesus, um, some, some basic things just to kind of chew on for you, I guess, <clears throat> throughout the day. <clears throat> Sorry. I think the, the first thing that I would tell my younger self when I first, when I was young in my faith is spend time with God every day. It doesn't matter if it's five minutes or 15 minutes or an hour and a half. I mean, obviously, if you can spend more, do more. But if you're busy and you don't seem to have time, man, even just taking five minutes and just, you don't need to go through your prayer list. You know, if if you've only got a few minutes, rather than listing out a prayer list and just going, God bless this, bless this, bless this, bless this, do this, do this, do this. God, God knows your prayer. He knows what you need. He knows everything that you need. <clears throat> if you only have five minutes to spend with God, just spend it with God. You know, like I, I just imagine like having kids and, um, you know, you've only get to see your kids for five minutes. What are you going to do in that five minutes? Are you going to tell them everything that they need to do for the day? Or are you just going to enjoy their company? Um, if they're going to be off to school and you know, you're not going to see them, you know, I actually think about that a lot now because, you know, there's been days where I've only gotten to see my son for a couple minutes just because the way my schedule worked out with support raising meetings and, um, running it. And honestly, even things as simple as like disc golf league, it prevented me from being around my son for as much time as I would want. So rather than taking that five minutes or however long it was and, you know, trying to get him to do something for me, I just spent it with him and and enjoyed doing what he was doing. You know, he was playing with blocks. And so I would just play with blocks with him. Or if you want to pick up, I would just hold him tight. And so I kind of think about my relationship with God that way. If, If I've only got five minutes to spend with God, I just want to just sit in his presence. 
read a little bit of the Bible, maybe, maybe even just read some Psalms and then meditate on it and just kind of spend some time with God. Don't go through your prayer list. Now, if you've got 15 minutes, go through your prayer list and take 10 minutes to spend time with God. If you got an hour, you know, go through your prayer list. But if you don't have the time and you feel like you're just rushing, you you don't have the time to spend time with God today, take a few minutes and just meditate, spend some time. Just he knows your prayer list. And so um, that goes into an, another aspect of something else I would have told my younger self is to stop worrying about stuff. Um, you know, there's, there's so much that we can do. And, and sometimes I cool, I don't know, I've, I would call it like worry, pray. I was so worried about something that instead of worrying about it, I would pray about it. But there's times where you need to just pray about it, put it down and walk away. There's some situations where you need to just let it go and give it over to God. Things that you can't control. Things that are truly out of your control. Now, like, okay, if if you need to, you know, lose weight, that's something that's in your control. You can do things about losing your weight. However, if, you know, your cousin has cancer, what you can do is pray. And so pray for them. But rather than praying for them and then worrying about it, Pray for them and then let it go. Get good at that. Get really good at that. Because if you can't control their cancer, what are you going to do? What is worrying going to help? Pray about it and let it go. Give it over to God. Truly give stuff over to God. And I guess that would be the next thing is truly give stuff over to God. If you're going to give something over to God, give it over to God. And let it go. And let God do what he's going to do with it. Um, you know, and then, uh, honestly, the, the next thing that I would challenge myself is, um, be generous. Be as generous as you can be. From leaving bigger tips than is comfortable to donating to whatever charity is going on or, you know, give to your church, give to your missionaries, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to take a second. I'm going to promote an organization called Feed One. It's uh, called Feed One because it's off the quote from Mother Teresa that if you can't feed a thousand, then just feed one. It's a great cause and it's a branch of Convoy of Hope in which they, for $10 per month, They will feed and educate children in need areas that otherwise won't have food and otherwise won't have education. Um, They go in and they set up, set up stuff. And so um, the bulk of the money that you give actually goes towards feeding kids and goes towards education rather than there's a lot of organizations that the administration costs are like half of what you donate. Um, feed one, it's very minimal amount of it goes towards administration and the bulk of it actually goes towards feeding kids and giving them a good education. And, uh, and so feed one is, I'm going to just plug it. Like I said, it's, it's a phenomenal organization. I absolutely love feed one. Give to feed one for 10 bucks a month. You can feed a kid, give them an education for 120 bucks a year you give 120 bucks, that's a kid that gets an education and food for a year. 120 bucks. I literally just got back from Walmart. It bought me five days worth of groceries, but 120 bucks can feed a kid for an entire year in other countries. And so the power of your dollar can go a lot further than you think it can. And the earlier you get generous, the easier it is later on. And there's tons of parables within scripture. And and it's, it's so easy to believe the scripture, but not practice it because you don't believe it for yourself. But I can tell you that scripture is very clear. The, the master who gave his, his workers, one talent, two talents, and five talents. When he came back, five talents had doubled it. And the two talents had doubled it. And the one talent just buried it. If, you get good at being generous. God's going to provide you with more. 
Now, that doesn't mean be stupid and just every day give everything away and then just pray that you'll get stuff back. Like, but at the same time, honestly, do it. I don't, I don't know. I've, I've yet to learn how generous God can be back. And that is the one thing scripture tells us to test God on is our generosity. We can't outgive God. And I have yet to give, I've yet to, in my entire life, in the, the 13 years I've been a Christian in which I actually give money, I have yet to give so much money that I turned around and struggled and regretted it. I have never once regretted giving money to charity, giving money to feed kids, giving money to missionaries, giving money to, um, whatever the cause may be. I have never, I've never once went back and went, man, I shouldn't have given that money. But there are so many times that I've turned around and thought, man, I should have given more to that cause. I wish I would have given more back then. I'm going to give some more today. That kind of thing. I mean, there was one time where I was praying about giving to feed one actually. And, uh, I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll give all my cash over to feed one. And I felt like God was like, Hey, Tanner, is, is that really, um, or no, no, sorry. I guess I, I should, should take a step back and say, when I prayed, I prayed and I asked God how much I should give. And God said, give uncomfortably, uncomfortably, uncomfortably give. And so I was like, okay, uh, it's a little uncomfortable for me to give all of my cash away. And so I, pulled out the money and I felt like the Holy Spirit was like, is that really uncomfortable for you? And I was like, no. And so I came up with a dollar amount that was even higher. And I was like, okay, that's, that's a little uncomfortable. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said, did I tell you to give a little uncomfortably? And I just immediate conviction. And I was like, no, you, you said give uncomfortably. And so I came up with the dollar amount and I'm not going to share it because I don't, I don't think it's right to do that, but it was a dollar amount that was uncomfortable for me at that time. And I gave it away and as uncomfortable. And I mean, it was an uncomfortable dollar amount and as uncomfortable as that dollar amount was that next month, I didn't go without in fact, I actually think somebody just randomly donated to us the amount of money that I had given to feed one. I didn't go without. I didn't regret it. I didn't look back and go, man, I just gave too much money. No, I I actually look back at it and now knowing where my generosity is now and looking back and going and, and honestly kind of going you actually probably could have given more and you were, you know, that wasn't really that uncomfortable, but at the time it was so uncomfortable. And so when I prayed about it, I felt like God was kind of challenging me and basically told me, you know, after, after the fact, everything that I felt like God said, I want you to want to give each time you pray and you ask me how much you should give, you're just being obedient in your giving. And, and yes, I, I want you to be obedient and I want you to do those things, but I want you to want to be generous. I want you to want to give more. And so it became my prayer for a while. God challenged me to give so much to a point where I began to enjoy it. And from that day, I began to get generous. And, and I used to call them blessing bombs when we'd go out to eat. Anytime we talk about Jesus, anytime we talk about Jesus at a restaurant, I have to give a blessing bomb. I want to do that. Both because I think it pays respect to Jesus and who he is, but also because if I'm going to talk about Jesus at a table, I want to talk about Christianity at a table and my server overhears me. I do not want them to remember me as being stingy and Christian. If they're going to associate me with being a Christian, I want them to associate me with being generous because Christians are supposed to be generous. Old, the, look at the Old Testament or the New Testament. God wants his people to give because the more we give, the more we recognize that it's not even ours to begin with. And so... If I were to tell myself something early on in my faith, it would be to be more, even more generous. 
Uh, and then honestly, if uh, next thing I would say is live in the good moments, like really live in them, be present. Um, you know, there's take your Sabbath days, take your days off. Days off are very important. You do need days off, but you don't need to have three hours every day free time just for you to unwind from your work day. It's okay to take the time to spend with loved ones, to spend with people you're mentoring, to pe- spend with people you love. Take that time. Um, because there will come a time where time flies by so fast that you wish you had more. And when I was younger, time seemed like it went by quickly. However, looking back, it went by so slow compared to where it does now, especially a time before I had kids. Take the time, spend it with people. You won't, you won't typically regret it. And so looking back, I, I thought I didn't have a whole lot of time, but in reality, I had so much time to spend with friends and family. Um, you know, the, the days where I could have gone back where I wasn't doing anything and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to binge watch a TV show all day, all weekend, whatever. Looking back, I would, I would give quite a few, (laughs) quite a few of those weekends up to have gone back to spend with my mom, you know, um, it's been eight years, I think, um, six years and I definitely still miss my mom and I would, I would sacrifice those weekends. And if you really think about it, if you only spend one weekend per year to spend with your family or not even necessarily family loved ones, I know some people, their family unit isn't exactly something you want to go back to regularly and you'd like to maybe even choose to forget it. I, I get, I genuinely get that, but if you've got a healthy family union, you've got healthy friends, but maybe your friends are your family, but if you only see them a weekend a year and you live to be 60, it means you're only going to see them and you see them for a few hours per day, ta- per, per time. You got like 50 hours, a hundred hours to spend with those people. You, you really truly don't understand perspective until you lose something important. And so I would challenge my earlier self to spend that time with friends, spend those weekends with family, um, spend your Sabbath days with friends, have fun. Another thing I would tell my younger self is to grow a thick skin, but keep your heart soft, especially in ministry. People are going to hurt you. People are going to be nasty, bro. (laughs) I ask people for money to support us, to do what we do. People are weird about money. People get nasty about money. You have to have a thick skin. But sometimes along with growing a thick skin, I would grow a thick heart and I would harden up my heart to people. It's so important for us to keep short accounts of people and forgive easily um, and keeping a soft heart. But in having a soft heart, it doesn't mean that we need to be wounded when people do hurt us or when people are going to hurt us. And so I would, I would challenge my younger self to ha- grow a thick skin, but keep that heart soft. Love. Give time. Forgive. Especially like small things that in the moment seem big, but they're really not. Forgive those moments easily. Try as hard as you can to forgive those moments. Really look at situations and assess, is this a big deal? Is this a hill worth dying on? And if it's not, forgive. Another thing I would tell myself is you really do have the power to change the atmosphere around you. If you go to Walmart or go shopping and you're a jerk and rude and grumpy, people around you are going to be affected by that. If you go and you are super nice, polite, smiling, loving, and love the people around you, even if you don't know them, you can affect their life in a positive way. 
Another thing I would say is to be a little more ambitious with sharing the gospel. I think about it in that first generation of college kids would have been nine years ago that I first started as a Chi Alpha pastor. And nine years ago, if, if I were to have gone and shared the gospel with every single college kid at that time, I would have been rejected by 4,000 college kids. But literally right now, I don't, I, I would have no clue who those 4,000 college kids were. But if I could have affected 10 more lives by being more ambitious and sharing the gospel, I guarantee I would know who those 10 are. And so don't sacrifice and don't hesitate to share about Jesus. Now, you don't have to make it weird. You don't have to shove Jesus down people's throats. But make yourself available and present enough that you can share the gospel and be prepared to, to know how to share the gospel with people. It can be simple. It can be just a little insert here and then let them ask questions. You know, just get good at sharing the gospel early. Another thing will be Find a mentor who actually wants to invest in you. Um, I had mentors that were good mentors, really good mentors. But in the long run, they, when they left Shadron, they left Shadron. Um, they, the town I live in now, when they left, they left. Um, but I also have mentors who've never even lived in Shadron and have invested heavily in me early on find those mentors who are going to invest in you in the long run and vocalize that ask them to invest in you ask them to mentor you beyond the town limit beyond the in-person limit whatever the limit is that will invest in you and will actually reach out to you every week every month and have conversations with you in order to grow closer to Jesus, in order to disciple you, in order to mentor you. Um, find those people and hold them accountable to mentoring you. Man, there's so many things. Um, I, I think I'll, I'll end on this one just because I don't want this podcast to run too long. The last one I'm going to bring up is that... Whatever you're going through, just remember that in the long run, everything is going to be okay. We have a God who's a good God. We have a God who's so powerful, so mighty, so loving, so gracious. No matter what your hardship is, and I mean it can be a hard hardship. Whatever your hardship is, it's going to be okay. I lost my mom, and even though I still miss her, and I, I shared more than I normally would share on a podcast about my mom um, and how much I miss her, and it's been six years, I think, six years. I'm okay. I just lost my dad last year, and I miss my dad too. And it's it's okay. You know? Uh, we totaled our car, and now everything's okay. We were flat broke. Everything's okay. I have food. I have shelter. I have my family around me. Everything's going to be okay. And even if I didn't have those things, in the long run, eventually, everything is going to be okay. Because even if it's not okay in this life, it'll be okay in the next. Remember to hope in that as well as live in that. Because God does have his hand on your life. And whatever is going on in your life, it's not going to destroy you if you don't let it. Channel hardship into discipline. 
allow hardship to develop you and to grow you. Because if we partner with God in the hardship, we partner with God in those things that would normally destroy people. And instead, we intentionally allow God to use those things to develop us and use those things to disciple us, to to grow us. Man, there's little limits to what you can do when you partner with God. And that doesn't mean winning the Super Bowl. That doesn't mean, I mean, that it means being content in your life. But, all right, Lord, I just pray that you would bless the person that is listening to this right now. I pray that your presence would flood them. I pray that they could tangibly feel your presence right now. I pray that you would show them that you're real, that you give them a sign that you are real and that you are with them and that you are guiding them. I pray that you would make it tangible. Lord, I pray that you would protect them against any attacks of the enemy, uh, protect them against anything that would cause them harm, um, and if you have to, protect them from themselves. God, I pray that you would anoint them, bless them, and that your favor would fall upon them. God, I pray that you, that your Holy Spirit would just envelop whoever is listening to this right now. It's in your name we pray. Amen. God bless, guys.